The dynamic program that we're going to look at on trees is going to solve the optimal subtree problem. In the optimal subtree problem, we're given a tree. We're also given a root. Additionally, every node is going to have a weight. This weight can be either positive or negative. The objective is to find some subtree of T that we're going to call T prime, which is going to consist of some subset of the nodes and some subset of the edges. This subtree T prime has to also include R and be rooted at R. And this subtree is going to maximize the sum of the weights. That is, we're going to look at all of the nodes inside of our subtree T and sum all the weights of these nodes. If every subtree has a negative weight, then we're going to output the optimal solution as the empty set. That is, it's going to be the empty tree. Here we have a particular input for the optimal subtree problem. We have a tree T, and we have a weight for every node. Note that some of the weights are positive and some of the weights are negative. We've also circled the optimal subtree T prime, and we can note two things about it. First, the optimal subtree includes the root R, just like specified. This is for any feasible subtree that's going to solve our problem. Second, although the subtree has a positive weight, it includes nodes that have a negative weight. So it's not necessarily the case that the optimal subtree is going to include only nodes with positive weights. In order to solve the optimal subtree problem in a dynamic programming framework, we need the ingredients for a dynamic program. First, we need to identify the optimal subproblems, or the smaller subproblems. Then we need to develop a recursive formula that builds the solutions to larger problems out of smaller ones. And finally, for the smallest subproblems, we need to identify the constants to set them to. In this case, our subproblems are going to be the weight of optimal subtrees rooted at a node V. It's as if we're pretending that every node in our tree actually turns into a root and we solve the problem at that root. We denote WV as the weight of the optimal subtree rooted at V. In order to develop our recursion, we note that if we look at a particular node V, we have two choices. We can choose to say that the optimal subtree at this node is going to be the empty tree and has a value zero. Alternatively, we can choose to have a non-empty tree, in which case we're going to have to include the node V in our, in our optimal subtree, giving us a weight of WV. And then additionally, we're going to include the weight of the optimal subtree for every ancestor of V. The idea here is that if we end up including V inside of our subtree, we may as well include all of the ancestors as well. And at every ancestor, we'll include the optimal subtree rooted at that ancestor. Now, initially, it looks like this recursion is going to force us to choose every ancestor of a node to be in the optimal subtree, but that's actually not the case. It may be that if we look at a particular ancestor, the value might be zero. If the value of this function is zero, that means that we didn't choose this node. That is, this node isn't included in the optimal subtree, and the optimal subtree is actually empty. In this case, although we're choosing the optimal subtree at this particular node to be part of our new optimal subtree, we're actually including the empty tree. Our final ingredient is to identify for the smallest subproblems a constant value to set. In this case, our smallest subproblems are the weight of the optimal subtrees at the leaves. In this case, the choice is very simple. We either choose to include the leaf in the tree or we don't. If we don't include it, then the value of this tree is zero. And if we do include it, the tree includes a single node and we get WV as the value of this tree. We do this for every leaf of the tree. In order to turn this into a dynamic program, we note that when we're trying to find the weight of the optimal subtree rooted at V, we have to look at all of the ancestors of that node and already have these values pre-computed. In order to get this right, in order to have these values computed, we have to start at the bottom of the tree and increase our depth progressively. So we start at the deepest nodes, the ones that are the furthest down, and continuously go up levels and compute this function at progressively higher, higher depth. To prove that this algorithm is correct, we're going to do another inductive proof. We start with the base case. 
the base case, we set the smallest subproblems equal to a constant value. And it's trivial to see that if we look at every leaf node, the optimal subtree at that leaf node is either not having the node or having the node. Either case, we get it right. In the inductive case, we're going to induct on the depth of the tree. So we assume that we have the optimal subtree rooted at u for all nodes u of depth greater than or equal to k, or rather greater than k. Then we focus on some node of k depth k minus 1. And we note that the ancestors of this node v are all a subset of the nodes at depth k. Now we assume that the optimal tree rooted at v is equal to t prime, which has node set v prime and edge set e prime. We write the value of this tree. The value of this tree is the sum of all the weights for all the u that we find in v prime. We can assume that this is going to include the node v. If it doesn't, then the value of this tree is zero and we're already done. In the case that it does include v, we're also going to look at all the ancestors of v. And at every ancestor of v, we're either going to not include that ancestor, or we're going to include that ancestor and all the descendants of that ancestor that intersect with our optimal tree. This equality is effectively just rearranging the sum or expanding out the sum to arrange the terms in a convenient way. And that convenient way allows us to say that inside of this sum of all the ancestors, really what we've written is the optimal subtree rooted at a particular node A, where A is the index of the sum. So now we can rewrite this equality as the weight of our node V plus the sum for every ancestor of the weight of the optimal tree rooted at that ancestor. Here we're using the fact that the optimal subtree rooted at U intersected with all the descendants of A is an optimal subtree rooted at U, or rather rooted at A. This proves the inductive case as long as we assume that the node V is in our optimal subtree. As we mentioned, if the node v isn't in our optimal subtree, then we get the value of zero, but that's already included in our maximum. In either case, our inductive case is done. Our maximum is going to find the optimal subtree t prime. Note where we used the inductive hypothesis in the last step, where we said that we have assumed that we've computed for all nodes of depth greater than or equal to k the optimal subtree rooted at A, and that WA is actually that value. The final thing to do is analyze the runtime of this algorithm. Remember that there's a pre-processing step that we have to label the node depth. This is going to take order V time. To analyze the running time of our dynamic program, we just have to look at the number of subproblems, again assuming that the memoization is already included in our dynamic program. The number of subproblems is the number of nodes. For every node, we have to find this subtree, the optimal subtree rooted at that node. The time per subtree is order v. This is because if we look at a particular node, the number of ancestors of that node can be v, and we can have a sum with v terms in it. Together, these things take order v squared time. And so our dynamic program takes order v squared time to run.